It's in the name. Welcome into the Helping Ailing Humor podcast with Ben and Travis. Uh, today uh, is one of those situations where we have an unfortunate thing and topic to talk about. Uh, but we believe, obviously, the Lord uh, has an answer uh, and has given us some of those. So we'll have that discussion right after uh, these messages. This episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast is brought to you by the 79th Faulkner Bible Lectureship Sunday, October 22nd through Thursday, October 26th on the campus of Faulkner University in Montgomery, Alabama. This year's theme is Reconnect. The Jenkins Institute's Better Series will be a part of the program in 2023 along with sessions geared towards youth and family ministry. There will be daily chapel programs and evening keynotes to encourage and equip you in your walk with Christ. The mission of Faulkner University is to glorify God through education of the whole person, emphasizing integrity of character in a caring Christian environment where every individual matters every day. For more information, go to faulkner.edu or click the link in the description of this episode. I'm Travis Creasy. That's All Pro Counselor with Three Chord Counseling in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Ben Hayes, how are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm actually coming to you from our offices at Three Chord Counseling. ThreeChordShoals.com is the website, but we are uh, we're doing good. Just um, had a busy week and a busy day, but other than that, I'm good. Well, I don't know about you, but it seems like we've tried to pack in like two weeks worth of uh, life events in a four day week. Um, yes. I'm I'm actually kind of looking forward to a five day week just because to get everything done but uh i guess the last time i laid eyes on you we were down at bryant denny stadium uh cheering on the tide uh as this release we may be really happy we might be really sad on the outcome with texas but uh, it was a fun trip it was cool getting to hang out with you and destin uh probably brought you back memories and like man it's way better having destin at the age she is on this trip but uh we had a blast it was fun your kids did really good. Like I was wow. super impressed at how well they handled just walking around the stadium and then being in the stadium for as long as we were. And uh, I thought it was a, I thought it was a really good day. I was thoroughly wallered, if that's a wow. word I can use, uh, by the end of it. But yeah, I thought it went pretty well. Went well. Well, before we get into the topic, uh, uh, we'll we'll just give a warning. We will be talking about uh, some very adult subjects. Unfortunately, it's not something that just impacts adults. Uh, and so uh, we'll be having conversation. This is September. It is Suicide Prevention uh, Month. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. So if there are any little ears listening, uh, you be the judge on whether or not uh, they're uh, old enough to listen to this episode. And, of course, we'll put a little warning out there, and probably the title of it, we'll, we'll give it away. But just to cover our bases and let know, let everybody know who might be listening, uh, it will be a little bit more of a heavier subject than maybe usually we talk about. But that is something we're going to talk about. I believe the they've actually done a national hotline now and, like, shrunk the number. Is it 988? I think that's... Yeah, I think that's yeah. right. You can text that or call that. Um, and so for, you know, teenagers especially who are not usually prone to um, calling, but to texting more, uh, it's a little bit more uh, user friendly, I guess you'd say. Yes. For, um, so. So, yeah, that's a that's one of the things. And, you know, when you give that disclaimer about, you know, the age thing. Uh, I understand a lot of kids, you know, it may not be a topic. We're not going to get into too much detail about anything, but it is the second leading cause of death among teenagers. So, you know, it's kind of important to me to think our, our teenagers need to be talking about or need to be hearing about um, these topics because uh, it's there and it's very much a uh, an issue that, that teenagers are dealing with on a daily basis, um, their friends, uh, family members, but even, you know, some of those thoughts themselves. One thing that I saw today that kind of surprised me was that, you know, it being the second leading cause, I'm not exactly sure what it's behind, um, but it is more than all the natural causes of death combined among teenagers. 
And so it's, it's a pretty significant thing that, um, that they're dealing with. I mean, you and I run for St. Jude, you know, we want to, um, you know, help kids that are, that are struggling with cancer and other things. And this is one of those things that kids are struggling with that sometimes we might not talk about as much. Yeah. And like I said, it's, it's a, touchy subject you know i think that it's probably safe to say as i think you mentioned that teenagers are probably already um dealing with some level of this and so like i said it's kind of a judgment call but it's also one of those things that probably needs to be talked about earlier than it was with us uh when we yeah. were teenagers and so i think that's sometimes hard for me to judge because we kind of go well you know it, However, it was dealt with when I was growing up, it was dealt with pretty well. Obviously, uh, I hadn't struggled with that, maybe per se, and that can kind of give us the falsehood, uh, false feeling, sense of security that, well, we can talk about it when, uh, about the age that we got talked to, but in the age of information and the internet, uh, that conversation, along with several others, is one that has to take place a little bit earlier and sometimes in, in some cases a lot earlier than maybe we had that discussion. Yeah, because, I mean, things are just at kids' disposal so much sooner now, like you said, with the Internet. Um, just with, I don't know, how fast kids are growing up today. It's a way, you know, there's things that they're concerned about at 8 and 10 years old that you and I weren't thinking about till we were 16 or 17, they know more about not just suicide, but sex and other things that we've discussed on, on here. Um, I, don't, I don't know that I knew what the word anxiety meant when I was a kid. You know, I don't remember that. I don't remember, how, I mean, I remember being scared of storms and, you know, things like that when I was a kid, but I don't think I ever heard anybody go, boy, he's got a lot of anxiety. You know, it just wasn't a word we talked about. And that's, it's good on some level that we're talking about these things and, and opening the door to talk about them. That's why we do this podcast. But at the same time, it means that a lot of our kids know these things a whole lot. You know, they're hearing it at school and they're hearing it online. They're hearing it on TV a whole lot sooner, I think, than we were. Oh, I think for sure that is uh, the case. And, you know, once again, going back to, uh, I often use the illustration of a, um, a socket in the wall like do you bring their attention to it and say hey that's dangerous or do you just hope i guess cover it up and hope nothing happens. yeah and cover up and nothing happens uh, and so it's kind of always been that that struggle and i think uh i think now it's kind of and why this podcast you mentioned exists is it's we've kind of got to the point that it needs to be talked about the the, the communication there is more important, you know, because when I was growing up, it was kind of like, don't talk about it. There's a lot of things, don't talk about it, but maybe you don't bring attention to it. And maybe it won't be a problem. Right. And like you said, we have way so much information uh, now. We are very thankful for Challenge Youth Conference continued support of this podcast and their partnership in raising funds for St. Jude through the Staying Alive Dodgeball Tournament. The purpose of Challenge Youth Conference is to meet the needs of our church teenagers who are growing up in a society that is often indifferent to living a life for Christ. CYC's mission is to present a program utilizing solid and sound scriptural emphasis. Our vision is to maintain a positive program which empowers our teenagers with sound teaching that challenges and encourages them to live their lives for Christ. You can email info at cyconline.com or go to cyconline.com to learn more information. We hope to see you there. So Ben, uh, we're talking about when to communicate, when it's time to talk about these things. And uh, you know, there, there are reasons, I think sometimes, and, and we may have talked about this before, but there are reasons why people contemplate uh, this, this outcome of which there really is no return. And uh, you know, share some of those with us in your experience. Uh, that that people oftentimes get in a situation where they feel like this is the only option. Yeah. You know, you often hear it uh, said that suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Uh, and a lot of people, 
there's only been a couple of people who've survived like jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge. I think it was, um, I know there was at least one person who survived that and said the moment that he jumped, he regretted that he jumped. Um, I wonder how many more of those who did that might have experienced that same emotion, but they didn't live to tell it. So, Mm -hmm. you know, there's things like that where it's important for us to think about what what's the reason that that people are doing it. And if we can figure out the reason, we might figure out some prevention. And so uh, one seminar I attended, I remember talked about what are they trying to communicate? What are they trying to control? What are they trying to avoid? And so when you start thinking about people who are attempting death by suicide, um, you know, are they trying to communicate something to their parents, to their teachers, to their you know, friends, to their family? Is there something that they feel like they've been trying to say and they can't say it? And so this is kind of a last ditch effort to get everyone's attention. Uh, so that's where I think it's important for us to be in communication with people. And we'll talk about a little bit, you know, some of the things to look for, but, you know, just mainly if things don't seem right, communicate with someone, talk to them. Uh, the, sometimes it's about control. Uh, maybe manipulation could be thrown in there. I'm sure that there's times when there's someone trying to manipulate something, but most of the time that's going to be more along the lines of, they're trying to control something where they feel like life is really spiraling and they have no control over anything in their life. And so here they are. Okay. The one thing I can control is whether I live or die. You know, I've uh, maybe they've been in an abusive situation. That could also be the case with communicate, you know, that, that they're dealing with some abuse. They're dealing with some, you know, situation that's happening in their life and they feel like they have no control and they feel like no one's listening. And so here's my way of getting that said and getting that attention. And then, you know, sometimes that comes along with the fact that they might have um, something that they've done that they're trying to avoid trouble or consequences or, you know, something along that line. And so people believe kind of in that moment that, okay, the only answer to this is just to, to take my life. And, and they, it's not that, you know, we generally, our, our first thing is to survive. Like I want to live before anything else. Mm -hmm. You go start trying to drown someone or, you know, do anything like that. You're going to quickly realize we have the fight to live. So if somebody has come to the conclusion that, they're going to attempt suicide. Um, They have had to override all of those tendencies. And so it's a pretty powerful emotion. So it's important, I think, first to understand what is it that maybe they're trying to communicate? What is it that they're trying to avoid? What is it that they're trying to control? Is there something in there that I can help with? Is there something in there that I can talk with them with? To know that they're not alone, because I think, most of the time that's that's what the feeling is is that i'm alone maybe i've got all kinds of people around me but i don't feel like they're going to understand it i don't feel like they're going to want to help me with it or that they're going to be mad at me or they're going to whatever so that's why i think it's really important with teenagers uh adults two teenagers and adults with each other we need people we can talk to Mm -hmm. and to know that we can turn to them in those moments yeah i mean like i said this week has been a wild week uh and just having people that i can text and go man it's been a wild week uh is just a huge release of course with you know, the legendary text group has been uh shared and talked about on the podcast a lot and i'm sure most people listening have people like that uh but if you don't you know i can't amen ben enough find some people right reach out uh you can reach out to us at hello at ben and com if nothing else. Of course the hotline below and I'm sure there are other hotlines that you can reach out to just to have someone to talk to. Uh but find somebody. And of course we are Christians. We believe uh, in the power of prayer. We believe in scripture. Uh and uh it, it you know, people ask me, well, what do I do if I if I have doubts? And I say the tendency is we want to move away from God. 
And really, if we have doubts, we should lean into God. Uh, James tells us uh, in, in chapter 4 and verse 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Um, and so we obviously want you, if you're listening to this or re- watching this and you're questioning uh, your existence, understand that you have a God-given purpose and a value that is not attached to any of the good or the bad that you do. Uh, God has given you a purpose, a value, and he's prepared good works uh, for you to do. And so um, if nothing else, uh, he sees something in you. And of course, we do as well. We see you as made in the image of God. And so, Ben, what are some you know, some things, some tips, some things to look for. I think obviously we live in an age when people, if they tell you something, even if it's shocking, you should take that as legit, right? I mean, mm-hmm. school, you can't say some of the things at school like we would have said uh, because, you know, it's sensitive things. You can't say those things. People take you seriously. I'd say the same thing in this era, right? Someone says yeah. something uh, even if it's as bold as to say, I'm contemplating taking my own life, you have to conduct yourself as though that is a real threat. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 one thing you said a while ago is, uh, a, or one thing you see, say often that kind of goes with what you were saying is, you know, God can redeem us. And so, you know, from, from a lot of things and has redeemed us, but um, we can be, we can be forgiven uh, the things that maybe you're contemplating when you are thinking, okay, I've got to avoid something. Uh, there are people who love you out there who will help you, and God is one of them. So you know, don't 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 run away from that. Uh, run to it. Uh, but things to kind of be looking for and and considering. Of course, if somebody just comes right out and says it, that doesn't always happen. But when they do say something or when you think something don't hesitate to to ask them and don't beat around the bush are you thinking about hurting yourself because some people don't believe some people don't think of suicide as hurting themselves they're ending it the hurt's gone at that yeah. point and so if you say hurting yourself they go, no, i don't want to hurt myself um and but they're wanting to end the pain and so that's you know they see that as two different things sometimes so be very blunt and point blank. If you think that that is being contemplated, then just come out and say it. Are you thinking of killing yourself? Um, are you considering suicide? You know, and being very blunt about it is okay because in that moment, then you can get that answer. Um, so that, but when some of the things to be looking for, if they're talking about death a lot, if they're, you know, sharing things about death quite often. If that's just a topic that keeps coming up, it might be something to just talk to them straight and see, you know, where that's coming from. Um, Self-harm in and of itself is not suicidal tendencies. People cut without the intention of committing suicide. People, you know, burn or whatever them, you know, themselves without the intention of suicide. However, you know, it is something to be considered because they're they're struggling. If they're doing those things, they're struggling with how to deal with pain. You know, how to deal with things they don't they don't know how to handle. And so, it can be one of those precursors too. It can be something that you know, if they don't learn how to deal with that pain, it could lead. So that's one of those early signs to go. Hey, let's. Let's get them talking to somebody. Let's get them sharing some things because they need to communicate something, you know, because they're most of the time self-harm is linked to uh, not being able to, I guess, not being able to cope well with stress or or other things that are around them. Um, Look for helpless and hopeless feelings being shared. Uh, You know, things are never going to get better. I'm always going to be in this. Just, kind of that hopeless spiral of things of course depression along with that uh, if there's if there's depression always you know being aware of it because that can come on that sometimes that's through no fault i mean depression is not always through the fault of the person uh, very rarely is it you have people who have postpartum depression as a result of pregnancies uh, you have people who have 
you know, chemical things that are going on that create depression. You have situational stuff like losses and death uh, that, you know, they don't know how to manage that or, or are struggling to manage it. And so there's a lot of different causes to depression, but depression is certainly one of the things to be aware of and just that emotional pain. And if, whether it's because of grief or it's because of something else, um, because of abuse or because of something that's happened in their life or just because of the chemicals not yeah. being exactly right uh, in the brain, that emotional pain won't go away. And they kind of talk about that. Those are just some things to, to be aware of because there are medicines that will help. There are medicines that people can take. Um, there's therapists, counselors, people that they can contact. There's the 988 number that can be contacted. And so there are people who are willing to help try to alleviate that emotional pain, but it, you know, it, it needs to be talked about so that that can happen. Um, and then maybe the last thing would just be, are there any changes, you know, in the way that they're behaving, you know, withdrawal, from the things that they have always loved or the people that they've always loved to be around? Uh, are they worried on edge, unusually angry, fidgety or restless and inconsolable? Um, you know, sleeping or eating more or less, you know, just changes that you're just like, something's different, you know, and they just don't seem like themselves just, do what you can to, to sort of communicate with them. Find out if that comes up, then you get them some help. Um, if someone brings that up to me, I don't let them go home without letting someone know. Uh, they I either take them to the hospital or uh, I get someone in their family to take them to the hospital, but it needs to be dealt with. And just because, like you said, we don't want to mess with it in today's you know, today's world, we know better than to just let it leave it alone. Yeah. And we, as we've said, we believe in the full counsel of God to use all the uh, things he created uh, at our disposal, whether that's a medical approach, uh, scripture, prayer, uh, talking to someone who's been trained uh, in the mental health profession, but talk to someone. And I think you mentioned some of the lies that we kind of sell ourselves, right? I believe that Satan exists, and that name just means the accuser. And I can remember very early on in my leukemia treatment thinking this will always be the case. Like this will always be here. And, you know, now I'm coming up on five years and a couple of years from a treatment, you know. But in my mind, I was tired, uh, and that may lead into some other points you want to make, but like, I was tired and it was a struggle and like, I just didn't have the mental capacity to think past 15 minutes. And I, yeah. I kind of made that deal with the Lord and those around me. We'll make it through the next 15 minutes and then we'll talk again. And I wouldn't say that I was suicidal by any means, but I, I do know what it feels like to have that mental block of, I can't think past yeah. In the next 15 minutes. And yeah. sometimes that's the case. And I think that's part of what you're talking about going home with somebody or going to the hospital, uh, not being alone. And I think that's such a huge key to a lot of the church and a lot of the fellowship and what we're doing here on this podcast to help people realize you're not alone. We all struggle together. And I think that uh, a lot of times those that are opposed to us hate that together part and yeah. uh, we'll come up with reasons to withdraw. Well, and we've talked about before a lot of times with anxiety, it's about what's in the past or what's in the future and not about what's going on in the moment. And so much of that is true here too, because what a, you know, what I'm trying to communicate might be something that was in the past. What I might be trying to control or avoid are things that are going to happen in the future. If, I don't get this handled some way. And so I'm focusing so many, many times on those things and talk to some kids this week, just about, you know, like a file folder. Does this go in the file for today for the moment? Or does this go in the file for tomorrow? Does this go in the file for, you know, things that have happened in the past? Uh, because the only file that I can really do anything about right now is the one right here in front of me, you know, the one today. And so if it's for tomorrow, let's stick it over there. You know, if they're, you're worried about consequences that are going to happen tomorrow, 
stick it over there in tomorrow's file and let's talk about what your emotions and what you're struggling with today are. And so you know, getting it in the proper place. And you've probably heard the acronym uh, PLAID PALS. And, you know, if we're assessing or, you know, police officers or others are assessing uh, the suicidality uh, of, of people, you know, do they have a plan is the P? Uh, what's the lethal lethality of the plan? Um, somebody says, I'm, I'm going to, you know, use something that just doesn't seem like it would make any sense. Then maybe, you know, they don't have full intention. But if somebody says a gun. Uh, I'm going to hang myself. I'm going to jump off a bridge. Those are all pretty lethal plans. Um, availability to those things. I'm going to jump out of a plane. Well, I might not be in a plane. I may not have access to a plane. I'm certainly not going to let you on a plane if that's the case. But, you know, the availability to it, uh, is there an illness uh, or has there been an illness in they, for them? Um, do they have one like you were talking about with leukemia or something like that? Uh, is there been depression? Uh, previous attempts uh, alone are they kind of a loner they they don't have people around them support groups has there been a significant loss a death a job relationships and is there substance abuse so if, if you've got those plaid pals is the the acronym those are just some of the things that it kind of in the same list that similar things that were in the list i mentioned earlier just to be looking for you know, these are things that if they're present, you might go, hey, they're high risk. Let's let's see what we can do about uh, helping them before it gets to that point. Because I mentioned some statistics earlier. The only other one I'll mention is teens and young adults. Uh, there's a teen or a young adult dies every hour and a half by suicide, you know, by by time frame. You think about that every hour and a half. A young person is taking their life so it's a significant thing that we need to be concerned about well people that have been left behind after these circumstances there's a phrase you know that that is used uh quite a bit and it all kind of leads to the idea of whatever it was we would much rather have cried with you through it uh struggled argued about it uh <laughs> been able to hug you through it, uh, walk you through it than to have this outcome. Mm -hmm. And so whatever you may be in, as you listen to this, whatever circumstance, understand that there are people who love you. And, and sometimes as a parent, I just try to communicate even to my kids at their age, hey, there's nothing that at the end of the day you can't bring to me and let's talk about it, right? Like I may be disappointed, it may be shocking, but I'd rather us have that conversation and work through it than, than yeah. for you to feel like you have to bury it and hold it back. And if, you know, if you're wanting the pain to subside and, and that's the desire many times, it's not, the pain's not going away. The pain's being transferred and it's someone else is going to have the pain uh, as a result of that action because somebody else is going to mourn. You may feel like nobody cares, but there are people who care and there's people who will uh, who will mourn that loss. Um, you know, there's been deaths this week in the community or, you know, in Alabama that have you know broken my heart to hear about. And I didn't know the people, but it still is difficult to get that news or to hear those things. So there are people who care. There are people that you can reach out to. And so. Don't hesitate to do that if you happen to find yourself there. If you're someone who's concerned about someone, you have questions about that. Um, there's all kinds of information uh, online. We can be a, a, a tool or a resource. There's other counseling agencies all over the United States, but you know, find people who can help you. Well, Ben, I appreciate uh, all the thoughts you had today and, and sharing that. And I know somebody... Uh, will benefit from that. And once again, I'll just reiterate what you said. Uh, we love you and we care about you and we serve a big enough God to handle whatever it is you're dealing with. And uh, we, you know, we could get into the weeds about what God feels about it. And I know some people have different opinions on that. Uh, but we do know, I think we can all agree that God loves you. He has a purpose for your life. He has some good works prepared for you to still do. 
And so when it's time to go home to him, he'll make that decision. And uh, I look forward to that time, uh, but we have a lot of things to accomplish here. And so uh, if nothing else, know that you're loved, you have a purpose. And if there's any way that we can assist you, I know Ben there and Muscle Shoals, uh, Pam Lenz and uh, Karen Mann work with him, and they're all great people, some good friends. Uh, I'm sure you can reach out to them, uh, and they would assist you in any way that they can, but do reach out to someone. And so, Ben, I appreciate your time, and uh, sure. we'll, we'll talk to everybody again next week. Thanks for being with us for this episode of the Helping Healing Humor podcast. Be sure to download our free ebook, 28 Days of Focused Living at benandtravis.com and receive all of our Helping Healing and Humor extra content directly in your inbox. We look forward to having you join us at the same Ben and Travis time, same Ben and Travis channel.